All right, let's turn over to the back of your paper and we are going to just make sure we have some of these vocabulary words down and we're gonna add a few new ones. All right, so the first um, thing the sheet wants you to do, or I want you to do, is to list the vertical angles, okay? So on this side, one and six are vertical angles. I'm just gonna write angle one and angle six. And then also um, angle two and angle five are vertical angles. I'll use a different color. So angle two and angle five are vertical angles. So now um, let's pause the video for a second and I want you to write down the vertical angles found on uh, off of line N and P. That was the intersection of those two lines. So pause the video, I'll give you a second to do that. All right, so now we're gonna list the interior angles. The interior angles are all the angles that are between the two parallel lines, on the inside of these parallel lines. So there's four, there's always gonna be four of them, and they are going to be angle two, angle six, and then what will it be? Angle three and angle seven. All right, these are interior angles. Okay, there's four of those. So I bet you can guess what the exterior angles are. They are the angles on the outside of the parallel lines. Got four of those. So it'll be angle one, angle five, angle four, and angle eight. Again, exterior angles are on the outside of the two parallel lines. The interior angles are on the inside of the parallel lines. Easy enough. All right, now we get a little more complicated. We are going to list the alternate interior angles. All right, what do you think that means, alternate interior angles? I'm gonna to switch to a fresh sheet. So I don't confuse you with all my lines. Okay, so we know interior angles are the ones on the inside of the parallel lines, but alternate means they are on the opposite side of the transversal. So alternate interior angles would be two and seven. And then what do you think? They would also be angle six and angle three. Maybe I'll do that in a different color here. Angle six and angle three, those are alternate, ex oh, sorry, alternate interior angles as well. So six and angle three. Okay, so alternate exterior angles same thing, except they're on the outside of the parallel lines and they're on the opposite side of the transversal, okay? So, angle one and angle eight. All right, and then what do you think we have? Yep, angle five and angle four. Okay, now if you remember from the back side of the sheet, supplementary angles. Okay, supplementary angles, they are angles that add up to be 180 degrees, so those angles together form a line. So, I'm gonna come back up here, angle one, with angle two would be supplementary angle pair. Okay, they form line P. All right, but also angle five and angle six form line P. But now here's where it gets a little trickier. Angle two and angle six also form a line. They form the line M. Okay, 
And then let's look over here. Angle one and angle five also form line M. So they're supplementary angles. So I'm gonna give you a minute to copy that down. And then I want you to figure out the supplementary angles over here for this other side. See if you can do it. I'll pause the video for a second and let you give you time to do that. All right, last but not least, we have corresponding angles. Okay, corresponding angles. Those are the ones that when, let's see, I should have one more sheet, but I don't. They are ones that when you slide this line over to this line, um, that the angles match up, okay? So let's, um, let's just look here. So angle one and angle three are in the same position. If I slide line N on top of line M, angle three is gonna match angle one. So I'm gonna come down here, angle one, and angle three are corresponding angles. Angle two would match up with angle four when this line is slid over. So angle two and angle four are supplementary angles. All right, on the bottom side, pretend again we're sliding N, line N over on top of line M. Angle seven and angle five would line up. I'm gonna come down here, write angle seven and angle five. What do you guys think the last one would be? All right, angle eight and angle six. All right, those are our corresponding angles. Just think corresponding is when one parallel line could float on top of the other, which angles would match up, okay? All right, so now let's switch over to our book. Everybody um, go to page 384 in your book. You can pause the video, allow everybody to get there. All right, okay, hopefully everybody is to page 384. We are going to do the check problem right here on the bottom of page 384. So it says in this figure, the two lines shown are parallel. Okay, so here's our parallel lines. And they're intersect intersected by a transversal. Classify the relationship between angle two and angle four. All right, I want you guys to figure out what that is and raise your hand when you have your answer. Is it alternate exterior, alternate interior, or corresponding? So we'll pause the video, raise your hand when you have circled the right answer, and Mrs. B is gonna come around and uh, check your work. So pause the video. Okay, hopefully you put corresponding. They are, they are not both interior, right? One's interior and one's exterior. If I slide this line on top of this line, the angle two and angle four is equal, so they are corresponding angles. So hopefully that's what you got. Let's go to the next um, problem. We're on page 385. This is the next check problem on page 385. All right. Okay, in this figure, we wanna know the relationship between angle four and angle five. Is it alternate exterior, alternate interior, or corresponding? So we'll pause the video for a second and you guys can think about it. Um, raise your hand and tell Mrs. B when you have the answer. All right, hopefully you guys got alternate exterior. The angles are on the exterior of the parallel lines and on different sides of the transversal. They're on opposite sides of the transversal. So they are alternate exterior angles. Okay, let's flip over. Now we are on page 386. Okay, so let's look at this diagram right here. We're going to fill in the table and we're going to find 
the missing angles. Okay, it gives us the angles for 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this angle 1 is 105. So angle 2 would be 75 because it is a supplementary angle. 180 minus 105 gives us 75. So angle um, 1 plus angle 2 gives us 180 degrees. Okay? All right, so we can do this a couple different ways. Um, we know that vertical angles are equal. So I know 1 is equal to 4. And that's already written there, and I know 2 is equal to 3. I also know my corresponding angles are equal. So 1 and 5 should be the same. 2 and 6 should be the same. 4 and 8 should be the same. And 3 and 7 should be the same. You can also do it with the XO method. Remember we learned that. So O is for obtuse, so the bigger angle is our O. Our smaller angle is our X. And then we just keep going, filling out XO, XO. And then this one is going to be XO, XO. So I know all my X angles are equal and all my O angles are equal. You could do it that way. So why don't you take a moment and fill in this table. Um, raise your hand uh, when you have it completed and have um, Mrs. B come check it. Actually, let's do this problem too. Um, let's do both problems on that page and raise your hand and have Mrs. B come by and check your work. And then we'll move on to one more example. So just pause the video. Let's fill in this table. Fill in down here. All right. Last example, we are on the next page, page 387. We've got a bookcase, all right? It tells us that angle two is 105 degrees. And it wants us to find, the question wants us to find angle six and angle three. All right, so we use our knowledge about angles to find out uh, angle of 6 and angle of 3. Okay, so it tells me angle 2 is 105. I know if I add angle 2 and angle 6, I get 180 degrees, okay, because they form a line. So I'm going to subtract 180 degrees minus 105, and that's how I get my 75 degrees. So um, the measure of angle 6 would be 75 degrees. And we know this because angle 2 and angle 6 are supplementary and the sum of their measure is 180 degrees. All right, now let's find um, the measure of angle 3. So I know that 6 and 3 are alternate interior angles, right? Correct. Okay, so I know that they are equal. Okay, there's you can remember that, or you can do the XO um, diagram. So this would be my obtuse angle, so my in smaller angle. So then I go across. Then this is going to be my obtuse angle. All right, XO, XO. My X's um, line up, my O's line up, crisscross. So I know that angle six is equal to angle three. Easy enough, so angle three is equal to 75, just like angle six. Okay, let's try this one on your own. You're gonna do this check problem on your own. You're gonna raise your hand once you figured out um, the measure of angle one and angle two, Mrs. B is going to come by and um, check that. And then for homework or for our um, assignment today, you guys are gonna do problems one through four back here on page 391 on the practice. And then you're also going to do, let's see, number eight. And number seven, you're going to take a picture, uh, take a picture of this, and then you're going to submit that in Canvas for your assignment today. 
So do the check problem. Make sure you are understanding uh, how to find the angles. And then we're going to go back and do those practice problems, one through four and seven and eight, and you will submit that in Canvas for your assignment. All right, honors, we are going to move on, but we will stop it here for um, our regular class.